Friday, April 10th, 2015. This is South Carolina. Last Saturday, a black man was shot in the back eight times by a white police officer. And I want to speak with you about race. This is my great-grandmother, Mamie Lawton Neely, a wonderful, beautiful, little old lady in her rose garden. I visited her grave this morning to ask her forgiveness for the story I'm about to tell you. I guess I'll find out in a few years whether she did forgive me. <laughs> Mamie Lawton Neely grew up on a plantation with sharecroppers who were freed slaves in the lower part of this state. In the 1960s, my grandfather and my great-grandmother were sitting in the living room. They were watching television, the news, news about the civil rights movement. And my grandfather, who was very uncomfortable with the civil rights movement, turned to my great-grandmother and said, Mama, if your daddy had hoed his own cotton, we wouldn't be in this mess. And my great-grandmother turned to my grandfather and she said, my child, your grandfather could never have hoed all that cotton by himself. Why, at the start of the day, he'd take a hundred darkies and set each one on a row. He'd send them down that row. And at lunchtime, he'd meet them at the end of the row with a lunch wagon and turn them around and set each of them on another row until they worked their way back that night. That was one day's work. Now, my great-grandmother was a good woman. She loved her family. She was devout. She worked hard. She ran a school for the black children on that plantation, out of the plantation house. She was a good woman. But she was part of an economic system, the injustice of which she could not see. She could not imagine something different. And you know, there was some truth in what she said. There's no way my great-great-grandfather could have hoed all that cotton by himself. But she didn't ask why it was happening in the first place. What is racism? This is a picture of the freed slaves who were sharecroppers on my great-grandmother's plantation. We don't have a picture of these people. But they were there. The plantation wouldn't have worked without them. Their lives mattered, and their lives matter now. What is racism? There are really four kinds. The first is discrimination. This is out and out bigotry. This is my great grandmother saying darkies. And we know that that is mild. These are the comments that are made in the shadows at cocktail parties. And if you think those comments don't matter, look yourself in the mirror and hurl insults at yourself for a little while. See what it does to you. But there's another form of racism, a second form that's very difficult to see. It's privilege. Privilege is the simple fact that we live in a society where being white, and particularly a white man, is the norm. And for white folks, there are instances upon instances, a thousand knives of privilege that we can't even see because it's just the way that life is. When I go in a store, I don't think twice about whether the clerks are looking at me. But when my black friends go in a store, they are followed. Why? Privilege is my great-grandmother, believing that it was okay for all of those sharecroppers to work that plantation. 
without ever wondering if she could have been in their place. Privilege is the acceptance of a system where I'm entitled to everything good, even if other folks might not be. The third form of racism is even deeper. It's structural racism. We live in a society built on the values in our Declaration of Independence and our Constitution of freedom, of liberty, the right to pursue happiness. If you are white and a man and you own property. Every generation we realize somebody got left out and we amend our laws in order to achieve more fully the ideals that we've set for ourselves. But from the foundation of our society, we built a world that was not fair to everyone. Not only not fair, but that purposefully exploited some of our own. Structural racism is the fact that those freed slaves on my great-grandmother's plantation once were not free, and that was legal. But the fourth form of racism is the most difficult. It's the most insidious, it's the most infectious, and it's the one that we have to tackle with everything we've got. The fourth form of racism is that race itself is a fiction. Race is a lie that we tell ourselves day after day, year after year, generation after generation. There is no such thing as a black person or a white person. We are all much more complicated than that, genetically and ancestrally. When we talk about Latinos or people of Asian American descent, we immediately jump out of that framework already. Race is a fiction that was made up to categorize people for the purpose of social isolation and economic exploitation. So what do we do about it? This is my son, Ben. Ben is watching right now. Ben is the smartest six-year-old that ever walked the face of the earth. <laughs> With the possible exception of Jesus Christ. I can say that because I work at a church. Unfortunately for Ben, in two years, his sister Anne will be the smartest six-year-old to ever walk the face of the earth. But he'll be eight by then. It'll be okay. Ben goes to a wonderful school, a wonderful public school in Spartanburg. He has one of the best 5K teachers to ever grace the halls of an elementary school. It's a fantastic school. And one day Ben came home from school, bopped in the door, and I said, Ben, what did you learn at school today? And he said, we learned about Martin Luther King Jr. And I said, oh really? What did Martin Luther King Jr. do? And Ben said, with this same amount of fervor, he fought racism. <laughs> and I said, that's fantastic. What is racism? And Ben, in 5K, six years old, said, I don't know. <laughs> now, that's wonderful. He's six years old, and he doesn't know. That's the ideal, right? That's the dream. But that is not the reality. It's also danger. That is his privilege, not to know. Now his teacher is doing a good job. She's teaching him the story. And his school is providing the support for that. But I'm his dad. I have to teach him. Racism is our inheritance. What is my legacy to him? What will I teach my son? I'm gonna teach him about these people. This is a group that meets once a month to talk about race. It's called Speaking Down Barriers. It's led by an 
a genius of a person named Marlanda DeKine. And this group gathers to have deep, honest conversations about race every month, month after month. These people have taught me three ways to face racism. They are simple enough for a six-year-old. The first is to listen. The first way we get into this is to break the social isolation that is the world built around us, the way our cities are built, the way our churches work, the way our lives are constructed. We spend time with people who are different than we are, and we just listen. We don't have to believe everything that they say. We don't have to agree with them. We don't even have to like them, but we listen to them. The second thing that we do is to share. If racism is a system built for the purpose of economic exploitation of a group of people, it's about greed. It's about taking more than I need to the exclusion and the neglect of other people. And the very simple solution to that, simple enough for a six-year-old, is to share. At the end of every monthly meeting, this group. People stand up and they talk about opportunities, resources. They pass around donuts. They share what they have for the benefit of everyone. What I teach Ben and his sister Anne is we share everything. That breaks the economic isolation. But there's a third thing that we have to do. We've got to rethink. Race is a lie that we have told ourselves now for centuries. But it is not who we are. And we've got to figure out who we are as individuals and as families and as a whole people. Listen, share, and rethink. When I was preparing this presentation, I spent some time talking with Ben. He's watching right now. And I said, Ben, I want to tell some stories about you. Is that okay? Yeah, it's okay, Dan. I want to show some pictures of you. Is that okay? It's okay, Dan. Well, last night, his mother walked through the slides with him, showed him these pictures. And I spoke with him on the phone. And I said, Ben, I'm going to do this presentation. Is that okay? I don't know what I would have done if he had said it wasn't. <laughs> he said, yeah, it's, a, it's okay. I know, I know, I know. And I said, I want to tell these stories about you, okay? He said, it's all right. I said, do you know what I'm going to say? And he said, little CEO that he is, you tell them Get rid of racism. <laughs> I'm not laughing. Racism is our inheritance. It doesn't have to be our legacy. But we better do something about it. Break the social isolation and listen. Break the economic exploitation and share, and rethink who we are, because this isn't it. Thank you.